It can be both beautiful, but it can also be terrifying. So whenever I look at the ocean, I just feel this immense respect for it. For a long time, people have viewed the ocean as this infinite resource that you can just keep taking and taking from. And now we're realizing more and more it has its limits. We need to start taking care of the ocean. My background is a marine scientist, and I've been able to travel to lots of different regions, which have very different ecosystems, but one thing they all have in common is human damage. If you think about where humans live, we live in apartments, we live in houses, you don't find people living in an empty field. It's the same in the marine environment. Artificial reefs provide a home and shelter, and then it brings back that biodiversity. We met kind of by accident or fate. We both realized that most artificial reefs are made of concrete. Concrete has an extremely high pH, and that makes it very challenging for marine life to grow on. As a material specialist in architecture, I was really interested in how materials like shells and algae used to be used in construction. We make our artificial reefs either from clay or a bioconcrete. We use clay because it's got lower production temperatures than concrete. It also has a neutral pH, which is really good for marine life to settle on. The bioconcrete we've made is made mainly out of waste shells from sustainable fisheries. And because it's made of all natural uh, materials from the sea, it's also perfectly fine for it to dissolve in the ocean. Architects often say that hope cannot be inspired, it has to be earned. And so I draw my hope from the fact that I am using my profession to act on the climate crisis. You can look at these photos and you can see the data knowing that it actually is making a difference. And if we keep doing this in bigger and bigger areas of the ocean, we can really help to bring back biodiversity.